so we given a question that uh, there is a continuous time signal xt which is defined as follows 1 minus mod t for time intervals between minus 1 and 1 and otherwise its value is 0. So they are asking you to determine the corresponding discrete time sequence which is obtained by sampling this signal with the different sampling intervals. See we have already seen that a discrete time sequence can be obtained by sampling a continuous time signal when we are going to sample a continuous time signal with a specific time interval specific sampling interval we are going to obtain a corresponding discrete time signal. Now they have given us three different time intervals so we are just going to look at them one by one what happens when we are having small time interval what happens when the sampling intervals are big. Uh, bit larger what happens to the signal. So first we are going to plot this signal xt in continuous time domain and we are going to look at its corresponding discrete time signals. So uh, I am going to just substitute values of t here in the signal and obtain the values for xt. The signal is having value 0 for all the time intervals except for between minus 1 and 1. So the signal is going to lie only between minus 1 and 1 else wise it is going to be 0 going to have 0 value. Now when we are having its uh, value between minus 1 and 1 just if I put the t, uh, t as minus 1 here I am going to obtain 0 which means that value of the signal at minus 1 is going to be 0. As I keep on moving towards t is equal to 0 when I keep on uh, increasing values suppose I am putting t is equal to 0.25 then uh, minus 0.25 but since there is mod here so I will going uh, I am going to have 1 minus 0.25 which is 0.75. So somewhere near here value is going to be 0.75 at t is equal to 0 value is going to be 1 for, for t is equal to 0.5 value is going to be 0.5 and so on. So if I just join all these points, I am going to obtain the corresponding signals. signal. Okay. Now the similar process I am going to repeat for positive values of t, just going to put t is equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and I see that I am going to obtain a graph something like this. Okay. This is how this xt is going to look like. These are the intervals. Right, so this is how the signal is going to look like. Now what they are asking is they are going, they are asking you to sample the signal. So already we have learned that if you want to obtain a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal we need to sample it. When we are going to sample the signal using impulse train, using some impulse signals then we can obtain a discrete time sequence. Now uh, in first part they are asking that the sampling interval is sampling interval is 0.25 seconds which means that I am supposed to take samples of the signals with at an interval of 0.25 seconds each. First sample of the corresponding signal is going to be at 0.25, next 0.5, then 0.75 and 1. Okay, so if I take that way I am going to have 9 samples from the signal y, 4 samples I am going to have for positive t, 4 samples for negative t and 1 for t is equal to 0. Okay, so uh, Firstly, I am going to plot this signal, right, so first sample I am taking at t is equal to 0, value at t is equal to 0 was 1, so it is going to be 1. Next sample is going to be at 0.25 since sampling interval is 0.25 seconds. First sample is going to be at 0.25. Value at 0.25, value at 0.25 you can just see from here it was 0.75. So this is n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1 represents first sample at 0.25 seconds. Now the second sample is going to be at 0.5 whose value was 0.5 right and third sample is going to be 0 0.75 whose value was 0.25. If I also wish to take a sample at 1 this would be my fourth sample with value 0. Similarly, this, this same thing would be repeated in the negative side also, I am just drawing it. Right, 
right so this is how my discrete time signal corresponding to the signal is going to look like fine see now there are two three ways to continue this question what can i do is see if this is xn okay if this is xn if i just try to plot xn by 2 what happens in xn by 2 is each sample is going to be multiplied uh, sorry i am going to perform x to n x to n so we've already seen a question of this kind what happens is each sample each discrete times uh, value is going to be divided by 2 and only those samples are going to be retained which are having n as an integer that is all the samples which were having n odd previously are going to be lost so i can just uh, plot this signal plot this sampling interval of 0.5 seconds from this signal also I can just directly plot it so what happens here is see first sample I am going to take at n is equal to 0 only t is equal to 0 which is going to have value as 1 now first sample that I am supposed to take is at t is equal to 0.5 second t is equal to 0.5 second value is 0.5 so this is the sample at n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 which means t is equal to 1 sample is 0 right similarly on the left side now see this is what I was trying to explain the shorter the sampling interval better is the information retained by the signal here the sampling interval was 0.25 seconds so I had a lot of samples even if I want to reconstruct my continuous time signal from this data I can do this because the sampling interval was small and I had a lot of samples but as I increase the sampling interval now as the sampling interval has become 0.5 seconds number of samples have become less okay these are a very few samples I, it would be very tough to reconstruct this continuous time signal from these number of samples so smaller the sampling interval better the reconstruction of the signal is possible uh, now for the last option if you see I can just represent the signal as or sampling interval of one second so now what happens is first sample I am going to take at zero of value 1 now the first sample first sample occurs at sampling interval of 1 second that means here n is equal to 1 with value 0 similarly at n is equal to minus 1 with value 0 so you see here we are only having a single sample since we have increased the sampling interval we are having only a single sample uh, so reconstruction of sig uh, signal using this sig uh, single sample is of course very tough so uh, that is how you are obtaining a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal okay so uh, now just look at this question they have given us two discrete time signals x1n and x2n and they are asking you to perform some operations on these signals addition multiplication multiplication of signals and uh, they are asking you to obtain these three signals so we are just going to look at all the parts one by one firstly I am uh, looking at y1n so in uh, to obtain y1n what they want is that you just add these two signals now see this signal was having samples from n is equal to 0 to 6 okay and this signal was having samples from n is equal to minus 2 to n is equal to 3 now when we are adding these two signals what happens is whenever there uh, whatever point of time whatever n value both of them are having uh, samples those samples are going to get added okay so this is just this is uh, just like union okay all the combined signal y1n is going to have samples from minus 2 to 6 it is going to have samples at all the points where uh, these signals individually had samples and whatever point of time they ha both had samples they are going to get added fine so what's going to happen is this signal had a sample at minus 2 no so this had value 0 but this had a sample at minus 2 of value 2 so in y1n y1n when we are adding these signals there is going to be a union of these signals so we are going to have a sample at minus 2 of value 2 right value minus 2 
minus 1 also this, this did not have a sample but this had a sample of value 2 uh, minus 2. So again you are going to have a sample at minus 1 of value minus 2. Now at n is equal to 0 the signal had a sample of n value 1 the signal had a sample of value 3. So now when we are adding these two signals their samples are going to get added ok. This one is going to get added to this 3 and we are going to have a sample of value 4. Right, so we are going to have a sample of value 4 at n is equal to 0. Now at n is equal to 1 this had a sample of value 2 and this had a value of uh, sample of value 2 again. When you are going to add both of these there is going to be a sample of value 4 at n is equal to 1. Sample of value 4 at n is equal to 1. Now look at n is equal to 2 sample of 3 sample of 0. So combinedly we are going to have a sample of value 3 at n is equal to 2. At n is equal to 3 this ha did not have a sample but this had a sample of value minus 2. So we are just going to have this minus 2 here. Similarly for n is equal to 4 no sample no sample. So combinedly also they are not going to have any sample. Now this signal does not have any samples further. So just these two samples of the signal are going to come as it is, uh, there are two samples of value 2 each at n is equal to 5 and n is equal to 6. So this is how after addition of these two signals the combined signal is going to look like. Now if I want to represent it as a sequence of number how am I going to write it? So value of the signal starts with uh, minus 2 which is minus 2 comma minus 2 see when you are representing a signal as a sequence of number you are just going to write the value of the signal at corresponding uh, times ok. Signal started at minus 2 and the value was minus 2 again minus 2 at 0 value was 4. Since this is the sample at n is equal to 0 I am going to put an arrow which signifies that this was the sample at n is equal to 0. To the left are the samples of negative n values and to the right are the samples of positive n values. So this is the sample at n is equal to 0. At n is equal to 1 sample is 4, 3, minus 2, 0, 2, 2. So this is how we are representing the signal as a sequence of numbers. Now look at the second part. Second part asks you to just multiply each of the this signal just multiply this signal x1 n with 2. Now see since this constant 2 this 2 is not inside the argument that it is not multiplied with n. We are not doing time scaling we are not performing time scaling this is just simple multiplication of signal. So what happens is every value every sample of the signal at whatever n values it was occurring previously it is going to occur at the same n values ok. But just its value that is suppose if the sample at n is equal to 0 was 2 previously now it is going to become 4. We are just going to multiply the values of samples by 2 ok. There is no there is going to be no uh, change in this n axis right. So when you are going to multiply this x1 n with 2 what happens? Samples are going to remain same that is they are going to occur at similar n values now. just their values are going to double. Right, so uh, sample at uh, 0 was previously 1, now it is going to become 2. Sample at 1 was 2, so it is going to become 4. Okay, sample at 2 was 3, which would now become 6. Sample at 3 was 0, 0 into 2 is 0 only, so it is not going to change. Sample at 4 is also going to be unchanged. Sample at 5 was 2 which would now become 4 and sample at 6 is also going to become 4. So this is how y 2 n is going to look like. If I want to represent it as a sequence of numbers, this is how I am uh, going to write it.
okay and since this 2 itself is the starting this is how you are going to put the arrow. Uh, just look at the third part now third part what we are doing is we are just multiplying these two signals see as addition was union multiplication implies intersection intersection means what when you are multiplying two signals two samples of two signals what happens is wherever there are samples of both the signals only at those n values only at those instance at which both the signals had their samples are going to be retained okay we are going to lose all the other data even if this ha signal had an sample at n is equal to 2 but this did not have a sample at n is equal to 2 that is its sample was 0 when you multiply this its sample will also be lost this is the intersection of signals. So we just have to take care of the point of those n values where both of them are having samples. Uh, so just look minus 2 minus 1 this signal did not have samples so its sig uh, samples are also going to be lost. At n is equal to 0 both of them had samples this had a sample of value 1 this had a sample of value 2. So on multiplying I obtain a sample of value 2 at n is equal to 0. Now at n is equal to 1 also both of them had sample uh, this had a sample of value 2 this also sample of value 2 which makes equivalent to be 4. At n is equal to 2 this had a sample of value 0 so its sample will also be lost because 2 into 0 is going to be 0. Now at n is equal to 3 its value was 0 multiplied by something 0. Similarly at n is equal to 4. Now since this does not have any samples further so this is it this is how y3n is going to look like. If you just want to represent it as a sequence you are going to write it as 2 comma 4. Fine so this is how we are performing operations on discrete time signals.